as the new coronavirus SARS-CoV-2 hits the world, causing thousands of deaths every day, experts gather forces to find ways to fight the pandemic. In Geneva, a team of scientists and engineers decides to use their resources and expertise to make a difference. The EPFL Blue Brain Project deployed its powerful brain simulation technology and expertise in cellular and molecular biology to answer a major question. Why do some people get sick and die from COVID-19, while others seem to be completely unaffected? Emmanuel, première. He started with the lockdown, right? What was really hard at the beginning of a pandemic is we were fighting against an invisible enemy. It is an 100% telework project. We were all at home. We live in a new age of science. Of course, we were happy to contribute with our tools to understanding of the disease. We really have the resources and the potential to play a major impact in applying machine learning to various scientific applications. In early 2020, the White House decided to release, together with a coalition of uh, leading institutions of scientific research, the Core 19, which is this uh, huge database of uh, freely accessible scholarly articles on COVID-19. No human being can read all these papers. No human being can actually assemble them. Having the technology to be able to read these papers, we realized that it could make a difference. And this basically opened the door to great opportunities for us to perform uh, data analysis and text mining on this very large database. Blue Brain Search is an open source text mining toolbox built by Blue Brain to perform semantic literature search and structured information extraction from text sources. You can see that the interface looks a bit like uh, Google search. So you have a query, for instance, in this case for our paper was glucose is a risk factor for COVID-19, but you can write whatever you want. And then you have like these basic features which allow you to simply search the literature as is, but we also enabled users and uh, scientists who have a deeper understanding of this widget to have more advanced features and parameters. So for instance, they can choose uh, to filter the results uh, in order to only include articles from given journals, from given data ranges, and uh, deprioritize certain terms. We have this second app, which is the mining app, which allows us to mine the selected articles. So for instance, we have cell compartment, cell type, chemical, pathway, protein, drug, and organ, whatever the scientist is interested in. A simple analysis by Blue Brain Search of the Cord 19 dataset revealed papers that all pointed to glucose metabolism as the most mentioned biological variable. It was now necessary to make sense out of all this information. That is when the tool Blue Graph, a unifying Python framework that analyzes extracted text concepts to construct knowledge graphs, came into play. Usually you get with a B graph of, oh, in this paragraph of this paper, I have found glucose mentioned, or I have found sugar mentioned, or I have found diabetes here, and I have found in another paper diabetes mellitus. So you end up still with really a lot of ambiguity and like millions of things that was extracted and you sort of need a tool that help you use a sort of organize this, clean it, uh, structure it in a human readable, human digestible way. And we form it in a shape that is a graph and that gives us this value of graph analytics where we can apply graph analytics and find different patterns. On the input, we receive the data from our machine learning team, which extracts uh, uh, named entities from the literature. And what we get as a result is a large graph that we call concurrence knowledge graph. So we can further do things like we can check how glucose is associated with COVID-19. Um, so we see how uh, glucose is strongly associated with cardiovascular system or cardiovascular disorders or hyperglycemia, which also are the entities strongly associated to COVID. 
this transformation of text data into a knowledge graph and then the things that our blue graph enables really brings the scientists much closer to the task of processing this uh, absolutely amazing amount of data. With this uh, super deep analysis, uh, I can know the biological pathway that are mostly cited in the COVID-19 literature. So, for example, oxidative stress, mucociliary clearance, proliferation, glycosylation are pathways that are really important in the COVID-19 disease. It is a super easy way for the scientists to have this summary of the literature in sort of graph that um, guide the scientists in the, in the search, in the investigation on the, on the question. Based on these findings, the Blue Brain Bio Explorer was built to reconstruct, visualize, explore, and describe in detail the structure and function of the coronavirus for this study. And the result is unprecedented. The power of visualization is really strong, and even for a scientist, it just gives ideas, but it gives you hints, it gives you a new approach. And from a visual point of view, sometimes it's really interesting to see how simply by seeing that the virus has changed, then you can maybe sometimes understand things. It really is about being able to play with something that is invisible. If you are able to navigate into this kind of new environment, suddenly it becomes your home. So the BioExplorer is an application that is uh, distributed in the way that it's, uh, there is a server that is running on our system uh, in Lugano. And, uh, and what we do is we compute the images over there and then we stream them to the web interface here. But we can still interact with, um, with, with what we want to visualize uh, from another window here. And if I zoom out, then you can see the virus here. And what you want to see is how the virus binds to the receptor. So that's very important to see that. And as you see, we really want this to be interactive and also we can, that, that's the concept of exploration. That's why it's called the explorer. <laughs> it's not just images, you, you really want to be able to navigate and to look the virus in every angle. With the help of these open source computational tools and the power of machine learning, the Blue Brain scientific team is able to discover a relationship between blood glucose levels and the severity of COVID-19 and to propose a hypothesis. A virus is a hijacker. The first thing it has to hijack is the energy resources. It uses that in order to be able to copy itself. The second thing it has to hijack is the genetic machinery and then it can get designed the blueprints for how to copy itself. And the third thing it needs to hijack is the protein factory, so that it can pump out as many of these little copies of the virus as possible before the cell dies. We think that SARS-CoV-2 has a particular strategy to hijack the energy system, and that is uh, the glucose metabolism. When we have uh, high glucose in the blood, basically we know that this glucose also goes in the liquids of the lungs. And these liquids of the lungs, it's called the airway surface liquid, is the really primary innate defense of our body, of our lung. But when you have glucose in this liquid, then it kind of um, impairs all the defense. It decreases really this defense, and that's why when the virus arrives in your lung and you have glucose already here in your lung, basically your defense are, are, are down. So then the virus infects all the other organs like the uh, kidney, uh, like the heart, and this provoke what we call the second, I mean the complication of the disease. And also we know that glucose again increase this complication because when you have hyperglycemia or high blood glucose you are more at risk for cardiovascular disease, blood clot, all this stuff. So it's kind of escalation of the disease because the infection is favored, your defense are decreased and all the complications also are easier to happen. This breakthrough research and the potential of machine learning associated with free access to scientific papers highlights the potential of open science. Today, the challenge is bigger than the sole battle against the pandemic. We produce the science, we do the research, 
And then we write papers. And the knowledge of our research is in these papers. Today, most of these papers are locked behind subscription paywalls. Opening the science, the knowledge, is now crucial. I mean, there, there is no other way. If we open the science, the machines can help us synthesize the knowledge and accelerate the scientific discovery process. So why only open the science when there's a pandemic? Why not open the science for everything? I mean, we have climate change, we have cancer, it's killing 10, 15 million people a year. We have all kinds of challenges. We could just accelerate the scientific discovery process and come up with solutions. When we see the result today, we are so proud, I would say. And basically, realizing that we all work together and make this nice job all together, it, it is really, really cool.